Welcome to Excel in Finance video number 33. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 5, click on the link directly below the video and scroll down to the finance section, finance class section. Hey, we're talking about chapter 5, multiple cash flows, and in particular, annuity cash flows. So, we want to look at retirement, full retirement. We, we want to look at um, our plan. Our plan is we want $3,000 a month uh, in retirement. So from that number all the way back to our working years, we're going to calculate how much we should have on the day we retire and how much we should be putting in each month. Now these are all estimates, right? We have no idea if we'll get 6% return in retirement. We have no idea f f with certainty that we'll get 10% through our uh, working years. However, if history is any guide, we, you know, these are pretty conservative numbers. All right. So the first thing is notice, if we're in retirement and we want a positive three thousand dollars every month, these are future cash flows. So it would be like, I'm going to insert a new sheet. I'm going to do Shift F11. Shift F11. And I'm going to say time zero. And then I'm going to copy this over. And then I'm going to skip one and I'm going to finally say uh, whatever the final time is, uh, time uh, you know, 300 or something like that. So what we want is we need to figure out at time zero what the um, present value is of these future cash flow. So there's a 3,000. They're all positive. They go all the way out. And really right here, this should be like dot, dot, dot. Right? What is the present value? Well, these are equal amounts, all positive 3,000. And the timing between each is the same, a month. And we need to figure this. So that's present value of future positive cash flows. Whoops. I'm going to click back on 19 and 20. We'll uh, call this um, Uh, flow chart FC. All right, we're going to just use our function. Last video we saw how to do the math, but we're going to say, hey, present value of these future cash flow. Well, what's the rate? We didn't do our period rate, but we're going to take 6% divided by 12 periods because they're, this is monthly NPER. Oh, we're going to live for 35 years, we think, times. Uh, 12. So let's see, 70, that'd be 105. Now I'm going to do a little trick here just to see since we didn't do it explicitly over here. Highlight that and hit the F9 key to value it. Whoa, 420 months. So when I'm 70, I only have 420 months left till I'm 105. Comma, and the payment, it is positive 3,000. The future value, that number actually, you, if you put a number here, it would be how much would be in your account on the day you died, right? So if you wanted to leave your children $80,000, you just put that there. We're not going to do that here. And type, as we mentioned, if this is end or ordinary annuity, we can leave that out. Wow, so we only need a half million dollars, right? I actually want to do a trick here. I'm going to put it back in edit mode and copy this. Escape. I should have put the formula right here, so I'm going to put it in edit mode, F2, and Control V. I just copied that formula down there. You don't want to use the fill handle because those are all relative cell references. So you have to have about a half million bucks in the bank when you retire if you want to withdraw $3,000 at the end of each period for the next 35 years. And you can earn 6 percent uh, compounded 12 times a year. Now, you know a lot of us think, oh, I need a million dollars or something like that. but you know, a half million dollars if you start early in life like we've talked about in this class. It's not hard to save up to uh, a half million dollars. All right, but check this out. If you know what you need when you retire, the question is, how much do you have to put in the bank each month during your working years? Remember, this is all estimate, and we talked about in earlier videos, you, sh you usually put, you know, a small amount in the early years and a lot more into the bank each period in the later years, but we want to figure out an average amount. So on the day you retire, if 
this was the positive, this is a negative, so you have to put it into the bank. Oh, but wait a second. We really need to think of this in a slightly different point of view. Now that this is what we want, this is going to become our future value. And all I did was put a minus sign and point to that. That is our future value value. And so now, here we did a present value of an annuity where the cash flows were positive for the annuity payment. Here, we need to do future value of an annuity where the PMT is the amount that comes out of our wallet into our bank account to save up for this future value. All right, um, we're going to assume 10%, uh, compounding periods 12. If you're 28 now and you're going to retire when you're 70, right? How many years? <laughs> equals 70 minus 28. So 42 years. You can, uh, this annuity is going to be for f 42 years. All right, uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to click right here and do my PMT. This is PMT because we are doing, we've already done this before, but now we're going to do a future value retirement amount and we need to know how much to put in the bank. So rate, this is going to be our period rate, 10% divided by 12, comma NPER, well we already did that one, time, or years, I mean times our 12, comma, present value, we don't have a lump sum in the bank on the day we start saving up, so we skip over that, comma, future value, there it is, and it is positive. Comma, type, remember, well, this is going to be the end, so we don't have to put anything. All right, and then enter. Six, six, $67? That doesn't seem like very much. Huh. Well, the reason why it doesn't seem like very much is because the variable that affects uh, long-term investment is years or time. The amount of time is gigantic here, 42 years, right? Let's just say we start uh, saving when we're 30. That's just two years different. Oh, that's not much different. That still goes up. How about when we're 35? 138. Still, huge amount of years because 35 times 12. I'm going to keep this at uh, 28. Now let's just come down here to cell B19 and we want to do a little calculating. The question is, how much did we pay out in total? Of all these numbers we calculate, how much did we pay out? We know we got 3,000 bucks a month, but what's the total amount we paid into this, this whole retirement process? Well, we simply take, and I'm going to put a, uh, just that amount times our total number of periods. Now I don't have a cell for total number of periods, so I'm going to say years times months. So those are all the periods we put in that amount. Hmm, 34,000. That doesn't seem like very much. Well, let's look at how much we received. That's, that is a negative, right? Equals received. Oh yeah, our 3,000 bucks. We've been saving all during our working years just to get that. 3,000 per month. And I'm going to multiply it by, well, we live for, th we're assuming we live for 35 years times all the months. Wow. Look at that. Just right off the bat, that's a million bucks we, we pulled out. Well, remember, that 500000 goes into the bank account and is earning a lot of interest in the early years. So even compared, compare that to what we got to pull out, that's a lot. But now when you compare it to what we actually put in, that is just unbelievable. I'm going to do SUM and add these two. And this is a negative amount. That's a positive. Yep, and that's all the interest. That's big. Now, um, the moral of the story, of course, is the present value and future value and annuity formulas and Excel functions are totally cool, <laughs> but that's not really the moral. Moral is start investing early in life, even if it's just a little bit. Remember, we said that's all, that's the average amount, right? So even if it's 10 or 20 bucks a month in the early years and you know, 300, 400 dollars in the later years, save early. Hey. We're going to come back. We have lots more amazing um, finance and Excel tricks, Chapter 5 for Multiple Cash Flows. See you next video.